everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time again for another Tech Lab Tuesday, or should I say, Part B of our uh, Guide Liner installation uh, video that we've uh, offered up for you here today. I wanted to show you the actual procedure in that Part A video. I kind of went through all the different tooling, some of the dimensional tolerances you guys need to be aware of. But in this segment of it, I want to actually make some chips and uh, make some noise. Hammer some stuff in, size a guide ID, trim it off, do all those things that we verbalized in that first video. So again, I'm all set up here. I've got my cast iron head. I've got my boring tool. I've already selected my 60 degree centering cones to come in on this intake seat right here. As I mentioned uh, earlier, this is, a, this is the pilot for this boring tool. It inserts itself into that guide ID. And then the centering cone takes over from there to find the centermost part of that valve seat, which gives us the centermost part of the valve guide. And then we bore that uh, plus 30 thousandths, 30 over whatever it might be. As, as I mentioned, 11 30 seconds is 3, 4, 3, 5. And when we're done, we should have a hole of 3, 7, 2 to 3, 7, 3, 5 to accept uh, the valve guide liner and have enough crush to hold it into place. Place. So let's get to that boring operation right here, right now. Go. Okay, I've got my centering cone right here, and like I said, this O-ring actually on this drill bushing actually helps hold that centering cone in place. That's why you want to just kind of snap him right into position there. Also, this is piloted for this boring tool to go through, so we're going to utilize both the pilot of the valve guide boring tool as well as the 60-degree centering cones to ensure that we're in our most center uh, line possible on the valve seat to the center line of the valve guide. And we're going to do this bone dry. This is a dry operation. No oils or lubricants are required at this point. Get everything set up. And as you can see, I'm just using a Sears Craftsman drill here to get this job done. But I want to give you the understanding of this, how we we're going to bore this 30,000 over. So here we go. See how simple that was? It shouldn't take hardly any time at all to get this tool through that. The next operation we want to do is we, we want to clean this rascal. We got to get this thing all cleaned out. What I like to do is even dip this in a little bit of uh, cleaning fluid, some, maybe some solvent, uh, WD-40, uh, some of our own CTF-14 uh, cutting fluid, because we, we need to get those chips out of our way. So again, take some extra time to make sure that guide bore is clean so that when we install the new liner, we won't have any chips trying to uh, work against us during that installation process. From there, on our particular liners, there's a little stripe at the end of them, as you can see here. It's also got a bull nose over here, a little rolled off portion as well. This helps get that valve guide started and uh, so it can go through the bore nice and smoothly. As I've mentioned here, we've got a, an installation tool that's spring-loaded as well. It's 11 30 seconds. This is an 11 30 seconds guide liner. And this will actually fit up inside. There's a little receiving uh, a groove right in here. So you want to make sure that valve guide is properly seated all the way in there. And then come back through to set up and get straight. And with your air hammer... that thing bounce back that means that I've got it flush with this valve guide bore and just like that I've, I've uh, now installed a valve guide liner again good machinists that we are cleanliness of everything go ahead and be sure you brush out the ID of your valve guide as well and now comes the final the final decision how much oil clearance are we going to run on this ap application and I know that varies for you guys because depending on what the application is, it may have a performance, it may have a durability, and it may be a diesel, it may be a gas, and you're going to set that oil clearance differently. And this is that carbide sizing ball I mentioned 
to you earlier. I really like the balls. Again, it's a perfect sphere, almost within millionths of diameter. And uh, as it rotates, it's pushing the valve guide into the bore and sizing the ID all at the same time. From there, okay, I've made a tool change. Now I've got got my ball pusher here, and it's got a little a divot right here so it can grab the OD of that uh, spherical carbide uh, sizing ball and then push it smoothly and accurately uh, through that guide bore. I like to just set the ball right on top of the valve guide that I'm about to push it through. And one other thing I want you guys to keep in mind, <laughs> these little balls, as, as accurate and easy to use as they are, if it bounces on your workbench, goes onto that shop floor somewhere, you're gonna spend some time looking for it. So I recommend you put a little rubber pad underneath it, a cookie sheet uh, with, with a rubber pad in it. Don't tell the, the, the wife about that, but a cookie sheet, a rubber pad helps keep that carbide sizing ball right in place. It doesn't bounce and you have to chase it all over the, the machine shop. So I got my divot there, I've got my carbide ball set inside, and this is where I want to use a little bit of a lubrication. So I'm going to add some lubrication into the equation. I'm going to go ahead and use my brush, another brush, and add some of that uh, bronze wall reaming fluid to this equation. Set my ball back on top of that valve guide bore best that I can. I got these fat, stubby fingers, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for someone like myself to get the uh, sizing ball in the correct position. But now I'm going to line up on there. You want to have a pretty good pressure already on that valve guide sizing ball when you run in because you don't want the action of the air tool to knock it out of position and then have to chase it through that, uh, that intake port or exhaust port depending on which side you're looking on. And it pops right through. So now we set the clearance on that uh, uh, valve guide uh, bronze liner and we just uh, uh, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat all the way down the boulevard. But we're not done yet because, one, I have to measure to make sure I've set my clearance correctly. And two, you can see I've got some material left over that needs to be uh, machined out. And that's where our valve guide trim tool comes into place. It's got a special pilot here, and that helps us center. And then again, I can use any electric tool. to try that, to drive that, and very quickly, I've got enough lubrication left on there. I don't need to do much. I just gotta give that thing a quick trim all the way around. And I'm looking good. Also, can't forget the other side, so I gotta turn it over. Go. Okay, now we've trimmed up the valve guide on both sides, both on the combustion side and on the spring side, so we can set that tool off to the side now. Now, you've done your valve job, you've gone ahead and cut your seats, ground your seats, surfaced this head, it's got good structural integrity, you've pressure tested it, you magnaflexed it, you've done all that stuff, you've got a beautiful cylinder head going out the door, you wave to your customer, 100,000 miles later it shows up again. And you notice it's got guide liners in it. Well, and that's a good thing, but you might say, well, how are we going to get that old guide liner out? It's a very good question. We have an actual a guide, uh, we have a guide removing tool. And what it does, it doesn't spin. We use an air hammer to put this thing all the way through. And these carbide blades on this side will actually cut that guide down its seam here, eliminates the crush, and then you, and it just uh, can be pulled right out with a, uh, a set of needle nose pliers, or you might be able to just push it out with a valve guide driver at that particular point. But all it does is go straight down. I'll show you that right here. Pushes out, valve guide liner is removed all at the same time, and we're good to go with another piece. We just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat all the way down. I like to go ahead and get them all out at the same time, and that way when I'm set up to, to bore, I can bore all my holes uh, using the different centering cones that come along with that, both for the intake and the exhaust. Then I can do my installation all simultaneously. I can do my sizing. Uh, simultaneously, again, according to what clearance I have for the exhaust or the intake, I can do my final trimming all in one operation, and it just kind of helps in the sequence of events, kind of keeps you more organized and uh, allows, speeds up, uh, uh, saves you some time in the long run to have a sequential event all the way through as you attack the cylinder head, rebuilding the valve guides, then doing the valve seats, 
doing the valve job, getting it all done and set for your customers. So if you have questions, you can catch us on the web at Goodson.com or better yet, give us a call 1-800-533-8010. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.